Good morning. It's time for Mornings with Stanley. And we are, Stanley's been following me around. Lucy was too earlier. It's like, just follow me around my house. Like, is there a storm coming? I know they can sometimes hear thunder a long time before we can. And um, so it's just, um, I don't know. They're just following me around, but Lucy's kind of left us. Maybe they're afraid I'm going to leave today, which I am. They don't know, but I'm going to to Waco to have my car serviced today. So they don't really know that they're gonna be locked in the house for a few hours, but it won't be too long. Shouldn't be too long. Just, it's... Is that right, Stanley? Okay, it's time for you to go outside. You can see his face, isn't that special? <laughs> he really is a good dog, aren't you, Stanley? Aren't you? You're a good dog. Okay. Outside. Come on. Come on. You don't want to go out today, do you? Come on. Good boy. Okay. He is a good dog. And now we will look at the person for whom he was named, Stanley Jones, Eli Stanley Jones. Um, this is the last of his 12 convictions, um, 12 conviction, life convictions that, from a sermon. I don't know when he actually preached this sermon. You know, he preached often and... Um, he preached often and he preached many times a day sometimes. So he would, I'm sure this sermon was preached often, this, especially one about his life's convictions. I bet he went all over the world preaching this one. He probably preached this hundreds of times and could do it without even looking at, not even preparing before he, he went and did it. But here's the last one. The last thing I want to say is that Jesus is the one perfect gift that we have to give. It is the one perfect export that we have to export. It is one thing that I can go to the nations of the world with without apologies. When I go to the East, I have to apologize for many things. I have to apologize for many things in my own country. I love my country. I love it deeply and profoundly. I love my country, but I have to apologize for many things we in America, for many things, for we in America are only partially Christian. And I think when we say that word Christian, we should say Christ-like. I have to apologize for many things in the Christian church, for the church too is only partially Christ-like. I have to apologize for many things in myself, for I too am only a Christian in the making. In his autobiography, I think he was around 80 years old, he wrote, he said, I am a Christian in the making. Still at that point, he was one of the greatest Christians alive, and really probably who ever lived. I mean, he's so faithful. However, when it comes to Jesus Christ, there are no apologies upon my lips, for there are none in my heart. Jesus is the one place where there is no stammering on my tongue. It is great to have one place where you are sure that you are on solid ground. If Christ is not the answer, there is no answer. If this is not it, there is no it. It is all a vast blank and a vast illusion. But how could this man have been an illusion who talked truth? How could this be unreal when every syllable was reality? So I bet my life on Jesus, the deepest and profoundest fact is that I belong to Jesus. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. So that's the end of that sermon. I like that sermon. Um, you know, one thing, I, I, you know, he, was, he was an evangelist. I thought when I read that conviction, when he said that Jesus is the best export and they, I thought he'd talk about the need for evangelism. And, 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 and Jones was, I think I've said this before, he was, he thought evangelism needs to be as much about witness as it is about, you know, biblical knowledge. Maybe even a little bit more about witness because um, God doesn't need our defense. 
God needs witnesses, people who go out and, and show the world what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Um, talk about how Jesus has transformed our lives. And, and I thought one of the interesting things I mentioned in his auto, autobiography, which is called A Song of Ascents, he said that he, you know, he was looking forward to going to heaven, to being with God. They found, you know, he, heaven to him would be to set, be sent to another world and to be set loose, set free to tell people in that other world about Jesus. He wanted to be an evangelist even in the afterlife because it brought him so much joy to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to other people. And I just, you know, I, I, that's one reason I like E. Stanley Jones because he challenges me. He makes me think, oh, I'm not like that. I really should be. I want to be more like that. And I'm trying to figure out how to become more, more like that. More joyful, more, more bold in my witness. Um, I think sometimes my witness is, oh, you're doing it wrong. And that's not what it's supposed to be. It's like, this is how Jesus has transformed my life. I have hope. I feel like I'm making it through this pandemic, this isolation period with sanity because of Jesus, because of my faith, because of my prayer life, because of these mornings with Stanley's where I'm reading this book and reminded of what kind of growth I need to have in my own life. Well, we're going to look at Romans 1 and 2, Romans 12, 1 and 2, as our scripture reading today. So Romans 12 is just a fantastic passage. It's just one of those passages that, um, that we all ought to memorize. 1 Corinthians 13, you know, Romans 12. I mean, there's lots of passages. The entire book of Philippians, maybe. The entire Gospel of John. So much. The Sermon on the Mount. I could just keep going. Maybe I should just say all of it. <laughs> but here's 12 verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Powerful words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our reading from Christian Maturity, week number seven, Friday. Spirit is good. Matter is evil. Yesterday's meditation brought us face to face with one of the most acute questions with which the epistle deals, the question of the relation of matter and spirit. The Gnostics had a simple answer. Spirit is good and matter is evil. In order to save God to goodness, they pro propounded the idea that the world of matter was created by an inferior be being, a demiurge of doubtful character. For how could God, being good, create such an evil thing as matter? Concerning one of these, one, concerning one of those who held this idea, it was said that he was ashamed that he had a body. This, of course, created a lot of hypocrisy, for the Gnostic could say that the spirit was pure and unaffected by the body. Therefore, they could live in the lusts of the body without being affected by them. The background of Hindu thought is similar. The world of matter is maya, or illusion. It is thrown out by the creator as a magician throws out a world of illusion. You think it is real, but it isn't. So the thing to do is to get out of this world of illusion, the material, the material into the world of reality, the spiritual, to merge yourself into pure spirit, into Brahman, the impersonal spirit. Redemption is redemption from samsara, the world order. On the way to that redemption, you can be kindly to beings trapped in samsara, but the world order itself is subject to destruction. I listened to a very able Hindu Swami expound on the subject of how the world of matter comes by projection from Brahma as a kind of lila or sport, and how the de devotee must turn his back on this world of matter and become a pilgrim of the infinite. One of the pictures depicts three yellow-robed holy men turning their backs on the world and setting out to climb the mountains in search of the infinite spirit. 
the sight of those three pilgrims with their backs toward the beholder with only a bamboo staff in their hands setting out to renounce the world is indelibly fixed in my mind. How earnest and yet how erroneous. Here's our prayer for today. O oh, Father, your children, not seeing the face of Jesus, have misjudged you and your purposes. They have thought to find you where you are not, beyond the material, for you are are on our dusty roads. There we will find you in Jesus. Amen. Our affirmation for the day, I cannot live beyond the material nor be for the material. I will live through the material for something beyond. You know, I think that a lot of our theology is kind of this way. We, we look for the afterlife. A lot of our questions, you know, evangelism, I think this is one reason why evangelism is scary to some of us or or if put off by it, maybe. Um, it's like the question that's asked often is, if you were to die today, do you know where you're going to go? And it's it's basically, that's about the spiritual, not about the material, the here and the now. And you know, there's that great song, this world is not my home. And you know, there's truth in that, but this world is our home for a while. And um, there's this great song, Cynthia Clausen, great gospel singer, um, sings this song, um, and she, once I saw her do a concert, it was all centered about that theme of, of life here on earth and life before death matters. And, and there's this wonderful line in this song. Um, she's talking about when I get to heaven. Um, will the, what will the world be like in heaven? And she's asking this question. I said, I never thought I loved the earth. I love this line. In there. I never thought I loved the earth until I held your hand. And I thought, you know, that's such a powerful thing that life here on earth is so important. And the relationships we have with other human beings make life worth living in the here and now. And, um, and it's just, you know, it's not all about happens after we die it's ha what happens here and now believe in life before death because that's all going to take care of itself if you if you're living it right if you have the faith that you need the, the relationship with jesus in the here and now and if you're on the road to perfection as john wesley would say then the, the hereafter will take care of itself worry about the here and now work on yourself for the here and now how it's not so much about where you will go when you die but how will you live while you're here how will you make it through this life while you're here and god will help us through god jesus will help us through faith in jesus i guess i've been preaching again jesus is lord